Hi folks, I'm Jay from Trade Skills for You, and today we're going to be looking at making off some Cat6 cable onto RJ45 connectors, and we're going to use a couple of different methods. So before we start, I just want to show you the types of RJ45 plugs we're going to be using for the various types of method I mentioned before. First and foremost, we have our crimping tool for our RJ45. These are our bog standard RJ45 connectors. Okay, they have a sealed front at the top there. We do have a problem with these from time to time, where when we make off the cable, they don't always touch the connector end. So what we are gonna show you is this other type of connector. Now these are push through connectors. The difference between the two is this actually allows the cable to come through. And when it does then crimp with this crimping tool, it actually cuts the cables flush. So you can check that the pairs are the right way round before you actually make that cut. So we're gonna look at both those methods today. Okay. So I wanna show you the makeup of the cable. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna strip the outer sheath with my cable stripper here. Okay. Now, as we can see here, we have four twisted pairs. We have a nice piece of Kevlar string and we have a nice divider right the way through the cable, okay? Now, one thing I do want you to be aware of is each of these four twisted pairs. These each have a different pitch, okay? So it just means that the twists are all individual to these pairs. That helps prevent crosstalk or interference with your cable, okay? You're gonna see me later on separate these and flatten them all out. Okay. We want to try and keep them crossed to the earliest point of our plug. I'll explain that as we go in a tick. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to remove the central divider, which is this bit here. And I'm going to remove the Kevlar string as well. Now the Kevlar string is just there to help with stripping the cable. I personally don't like to use it, but that's what it is there for. So I'm just going to use my side cutters now to get rid of that central divider. And then we are going to separate these individual cables now. But what I want to make sure is that I'm keeping the twist as close as I can to this outer sheathing. Okay, I don't want to untwist more than I have to really. So as you can see, I'm just going to untwist those. I'm going to start with the orange. And I'm going to talk about the order in which we put these cables in. In a moment. So there we go. As you can see, nice and flat, untwisted, but not too much. I'm gonna do that for each individual core now. So as you can see, I've put these in a specific order. Now there are two methods we can use. There's method A and there's method B. Method A is an older installation. We're now looking at a modern installation, so this would be method B we're gonna be using. Now as you can see, the order I've put them in are the striped orange followed by solid orange we've then got striped green and we have solid blue then we have striped blue and then we have solid green and lastly we have striped brown and solid brown so that is the way we want our cables to be for method b so once we've got them in order we're gonna just take a look at the RJ45. Now we hold it with the top bit down. And if we look at each individual one of these copper strips, there are terminals and they're numbered one to eight. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and finish eight on the right hand side. Now these need to be the right way round and they need to match at both ends for us to have a valid usable cable. So, now I've got these, here's the tricky bit. For the crimp method that I'm gonna use, I have to try as best I can to hold these in place without moving them too much so I know where to cut them. So all I've done there is I've kept the outer sheath to the sort of post box there See a little rectangle on the cable. I'm just going to hold that in place 
and using my thumb gauge when I'm going to have to make a cut in these cables. Now, this is the tricky bit because it doesn't leave us with much conductor to play with and we have to get them in the right way round. So I'm going to try and cut these as straight as possible. Okay, just make a mess. Hold my RJ45 the correct way round. Now going to push them in. Making sure that it makes contact with the copper at the end. Okay, so it's right in as much as I can get it. Okay, that looks good to me. If you can see that there. Now I'm going to use my crimping tool. I'm going to place that in there. So just to show you again, it goes in one way. When I'm happy, keep the cable compressed in, squeeze down, and that should be an RJ45 all made off. So now we're going to use the feed through crimps on our RJ45. And as you can see, the major difference from the previous method is that we can actually feed these cables through and make sure they're in the right order before we make the actual terminations. As you can see, exactly the same rules apply as before. We've got our outer sheath in the small little letterbox or small little rectangle there. Now with these RJ45s, they come with an actual crimping tool that only fit this RJ45. Okay, so just the same as last time, I'm gonna place it through. And as you can see, all my cables have come through. And what this is actually gonna do is it's gonna cut the cables flush with the RJ45. And what we mean by flush is it just means it's gonna be level with the end of the uh, plug. So as I apply a bit of pressure, there we go. One complete RJ45. Like we said, they have to be in the correct order. Remember, one, two, eight. Now that we've made it off, I've got both ends, all that's left to do is to test this cable is actually usable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of these testers. There are many different ones out there. We have a nice detachable part at the bottom. So I'm gonna plug in my RJ45 one end and my RJ45 the other. And when I press the button, what I'm looking for is along the RJ45 mark here, I'm looking for it to check each individual pair and I should get a nice blue light that says connection. So press the button and there we go. The cable is okay to use. I hope you found this video useful. So please like, subscribe and I'll see you next time.